Welcome to Beaten Podcast, and that's the cat saying hello too. <laughs> yeah, he's decided he wants to join in. Hello, cat. <laughs> I'm Glenn, by the way. Mm-hmm. I... I was waiting for Lee to introduce me, but you know, Sorry. <laughs> this is Glenn. She couldn't. She couldn't be. But she's about to talk about the cat. <laughs> it's fine. How are you? I'm all right, and yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, we were going to talk about... Well, we said on the last podcast we were going to start talking about the other Doctors because it's, it's sort of on the run-up to Christmas now, on the run-up to seeing Jodie Whittaker. Before we do that, though, I did want to talk, because it's gone quiet for a, a week or so now, but about a week and a half ago, there was some like massive rumour news coming out of the rumour mill. The one about Bradley Walsh being... The... Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to take that. I don't like him, but... I can't wait. I hope it's true. I love Bradley Walsh. Mm-hmm. He's great. He hope he plays in some kind of grumpy old git. <laughs> I think that's probably, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it probably will. There's someone who... I kind of want him... To either cross between sort of Wilf Mott and... Not a horrific sexist, but a bit of a sexist. Mm. Who always wants to, you know, it's like, come on, love, you can't be this Where's scientist timeline. <laughs> I'll do this, love. I'll sort this out. <laughs> kind of like Duggan from um, City of Death. Mm-hmm. If you can be a bit like Duggan, if it mm. could be Duggan, yeah, I'd be amazing. He's not going to be Duggan. Is it Duggan or Duggan? Duggan. Mm. Um, Tom Chadbon yeah, is who he actually is. But uh, I, I, I really like Bradley Walsh, and he was really people. I remember seeing the sort of the, when the news hit, people saying, "Oh, he's not an actor; he's only on the checks." And thinking, "You realise he was in Coronation Street for two years, right?" Was he? I don't watch it. Yeah, he was uh, Mike Baldwin's son. When Mike Baldwin died, his son Danny came into the street, and that was him. Uh, well, and he was in um, Law and Order as well, along with former Doctor Peter Davison, and I think he worked with Freema Ragnan in that as well. I'm sure she was in Law and Order UK. Yes, she was. It was the um, so she was did after uh, Torchwood. Yeah, there you go. But uh, yeah, so I mean that would be sort of three Doctor Who people who worked on Lauren Order UK, and yeah, apparently Freema was very excited <laughs> because uh, every, like most people who have worked with Bradley Walsh, apparently they all love him. Mm-hmm. He's great, so I would love him to be in Doctor Who. Plus, it'd be an interesting dynamic instead of getting a young bloke. Yeah, having some middle aged bloke doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that'd be interesting. But anyway, we we will see. There's been no news on that yeah. for about a week, so I'm guessing that might actually mean that it is true, because yeah. otherwise they would have sort of squashed it straight away. But uh, we'll see. It just um, carries on the uh, younger woman, older bloke uh, trope that Doctor Who is very, very much well known for. <laughs> yeah, but sort of subverting it. Yeah. One thing I will say, now I still haven't seen anything that Jody has been in, mm-hmm. but I have heard her speak. She needs to tone that accent down. It works. Oh, she, needs, she needs not to have, it's really annoying, I'm sorry. I, it's, yeah, this is a personal thing. This is a personal, I don't like the northern accent thing. <laughs> and yes, I realise how ironic that is, but I don't. Yeah. I don't like professional northerners, is why I never really got on with nine. Mm-hmm. Because he was all oh, professionally northern, and it's like, no, I can't, I can't do it. I can't cope with three series of that, mm-hmm. please. <laughs> so tone it down or get rid, please. We, we we don't want a northern doctor again. What about professional Scotsman like Capaldi? <laughs> well, that's all. That's not too bad because he's got a nice accent. He's not like that. The problem is the Sheffield accent. I'm going to lose listeners for this, but it's <laughs> like the Birmingham accent. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. You still sound a bit like Barry off of Feeder's own pit. <laughs> I'm the doctor. I'm going to take s- s- charge of this situation. And it's like, uh, no. <laughs> no. And it's like that with Sheffield, because it's the Sheffield Barnsley accent. So it's like, uh, I thought the Sheffield accent was what Sean Bean and Richard Armitage have. Yeah, she's she's got a touch of it, though, as well, isn't she? She's... Oh, is she Normanton or somewhere like that? She's Barnsley area, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's all, it's all South Yorkshire. Mm-hmm. It's all South Yorkshire. But I mean, if she can tone it down like Sean Bean does, because if you actually hear Sean Bean talk, mm-hmm. 
he's extremely northern. Mm-hmm. It's like the amount he's toned it down for things like Sharp and, and Game of Thrones and whatnot. Oh, no, he can't. Um, that was Game of Thrones. Winter is coming. <laughs> Winter's coming. Winter's coming. <laughs> O2. O2. <laughs> Get it all on O2. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, look, Sean, I love you, but fuck me. Um, just turn the accent down, love, and he'll be fine. Will Jody. He never died in. What, Sharp? Yeah. Never died in Sharp. Did he die? He didn't die in Lady Chatley's lover, did he? No. No, no, they fucked off at the end. I do you know what? I've never seen it. I've never read it. I have no interest in that. Mainly because I once read a biography of D.H. Lawrence and he's a horrible person. I think I was <laughs> a child. I think it was 10, 11, 12 when it was on television with Sean Bean and Jolie Richardson. Jolie, wasn't it? Yeah. And fucking Richardson girls get everywhere. And you're um, watching it and I'm sitting there cringing, going, oh, get this off. Please make me disappear out of the room. Salt and pepper, salt and pepper, salt and pepper. <laughs> Oof. That's awful, that, when you sat with parentals and there's a love scene comes on. Yeah. And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> anyway, we're not talking about this. We're talking about Doctor Who. Well, uh, specifically. Like, uh, the Doctor and River kiss. She was like, oh, mum, go away. <laughs> <laughs> That's when uh, it's when I have a ten kissed rose. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> One thing you can do better. For another, no, just, just no, Ugh. Ugh. no. Anyway, um, the doctor we're talking about would never hold the truck with any of that sort of behaviour. Nah. Uh, or we <laughs> should <laughs> married in uh, the Aztecs. <laughs> yeah, he didn't really want it though, did he? No. Um. But he'll be back on our screens at Christmas, kind of. Um, we are, of course, talking about the first Doctor, as played by William Hartnell, Richard Herndall, and um, obviously David Bradley, and, oh, what's his name, William... What? Uh... Chesterton. Chesterton. William Russell. William Russell, yeah. Um, he, he plays the first Doctor as well. Does he? Oh, of. yeah. In the audios. Yeah, I thought it was, yeah. He, he, I'm not saying he does it well, but he does it. Um, as as Richard Herndall, uh, as Mark Strickson diplomatically said, it, it, it's a, a complete performance. <laughs> um, but yes, First Doctor. Uh, and we were talking about the First Doctor in uh, a Facebook chat a couple of days ago, sort of getting ready for this and, and collecting thoughts. And we're both of the opinion that it's a bit of a bastard, really, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially when you first meet him. He's, he's not especially a nice person, this first doctor. What are you doing? You're not going to go to social services? Come on, we're going. You're coming too. <laughs> why? Because I said so, that's why. Because I don't like the look of you and I want to teach you a lesson. <laughs> that's the only reason he takes um, thing in Barbara, Ian and Barbara. He just wants to piss them off. Yeah. Because he's an old swat. Basically. Then tell him that he doesn't know how to get them back. <laughs> Lies. He knew how to get them back. But he did love Susan. Oh, Even though, and and do you know what? I'm glad that we don't know why or how she's his granddaughter. Mm-hmm. I hope never to find out. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got that thing where they try to explain it in the 90s. They said, oh, he's the other. Yeah. And, and looms and lung barrow and all that. No, 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 not looms. Please, not the looms. <laughs> yeah, the looms. No, not the mind probe. A different doctor, never mind. <laughs> no, not the mind probe. <laughs> With his weird Walkenesque pronunciation. <laughs> um, yes, well, of course, looms and, and lung barrow and stuff uh, definitely is not canon anymore. Yes, you've read lung That's... barrow, haven't you? I have, and yeah. I, I don't mind it. I, I thought for the 90s... It was a good explanation. When we didn't think it was coming back, yeah. it, it sufficed as an explanation. But that's fine. But like the Star Wars Expanded Universe, the Doctor Who Expanded Universe is no longer canon. Yep. So he... It, it, is he the first? Get rid of all the uh, complicated shit, getting rid of that. Yeah. Is he the first Doctor? We don't know because of the brain of Morbius. <laughs> See, I think he is the first Doctor. Mm-hmm. I don't think 
that it's his first regeneration cycle. Mm -hmm. I am of the very firm opinion that he's the first one to call himself the Doctor. Yeah. But I think he had a whole regeneration cycle. That's part of the reason he got pissed off with Gallifrey. Mm -hmm. He gave himself another Mm -hmm. and then buggered off to see the universe and set things right that once went wrong and all that kind of gubbins. So I think he is the first Doctor, as it as it were, but not the first Time Lord or, or Theta Sigma or whatever you want to call him. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I don't know, I think he probably is quite head off with it. I think he is the pro- probably the first Doctor and first yeah. set of regenerations. I, I See, I don't think he is because 12 said that he'd been a woman previously. Mm. So I think that kind of suggests that he was, yeah, all right, he was the first Doctor, but he wasn't the first Time Lord. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, he, uh, you know what I mean. Yes, I do. He, he, I think he had a whole new set of regenerations before the ones that we saw yeah. or the ones that we've seen. Um, but obviously we don't know why he left Gallifrey exactly. He says to see the universe, to, to set things right. But we don't know. I mean, we do know certain things. That the TARDIS that, stole him. Yeah, the TARDIS stole him. He stole the hand of Omega. Yeah. That was that body, and he secreted it in Totter's Lane. That's why they were there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it explicitly tells you that in Remembrance. Yeah. So he kind of sort of knew that the Time War was coming. Do you think maybe he left Gallifrey because he knew the Time War was coming and they wouldn't believe him? Possibly. Sort of like a reverse Jurel. Obviously, Jarrell stayed on Krypton yeah. when he gave the warnings from Warren Malik, but the Doctor left with Susan. Yeah, so I wonder. Maybe, but he didn't know what Daleks were when he first discovered them uh, on Scarrow. When they first went there. But it could be that they didn't know about the Daleks, but they knew something was coming. Something was out there. Yeah. Possibly. I don't we don't know, do we? I mean, we know, probably never gonna find out. But it's always interesting. that's one of the good things about Doctor Who is that the questions are sometimes more interesting than the answers. Mm-hmm. Um but anyway, we do know that he left Gallifrey, we do know that he secreted himself on Tossa's Lane for a bit. Uh and Susan went to school and she uh, the interest of a couple of teachers who wanted to know where she came from and where she lived mm-hmm. and then got kidnapped by the doctor and sent back to Shall we say not the best Doctor Who adventure in the world? No, but it was a good start. It was, it was, it's important because that's where it started. But I think watching it a couple of times is probably the best. Mm -hmm. And then never watching it again. Yeah. Because it's a bit boring. A little bit here and there, especially that bit where he's decided that he's going to bash the bloody skull in of uh, the uh, poor bloke who's there too slow. And too ill. <laughs> yeah, he's holding them back. Mm. Um, there's a great bit in um, the Terence Dix novel, The Eight Doctors, which is set directly mm-hmm. after um, McGann's first adventure in San Francisco. And he's lost his memory and he has to go back to each of his incarnations to regain his memory. Yeah. And the memory goes back to, uh, for the first Doctor, is that bit, that pivotal moment where he basically decides the Doctor's future. Mm-hmm. And if if he'd killed that bloke, he would have gone down a very different, darker path than maybe he would have done uh, previously. And there's a great bit in it where, the obviously, the first Doctor is very, you know, proud of telling people he's an older gentleman and you must listen to me because I'm old. <laughs> and the eighth Doctor just says, actually, I'm older and wiser than you, so put down that rock. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he does. He, that, that you know, that sort of sets the first Doctor on the right path. And I thought that was a. It is a pivotal moment, in, not only in the story, but in, you know, he could have killed somebody. Yeah, and also the first time he actually uh, pays attention to uh, Ian. Although he doesn't call him Ian. No, Chatterton, Chesterton, whatever. Chesterton, Chatterton. <laughs> That's where Mickey and Ricky comes from. Yeah. I'm certain of it. it. Has to be I'm certain of it. <laughs> so he's only at the end he calls him Ian, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's quite a touching moment, but the thing is about the Doctor is that there is proper character development because obviously they didn't know he was going to regenerate, but they did want to develop his character. Yeah. So, you know, obviously when we see him, and he is unfairly given that grumpy old man mm-hmm. 
whenever he looks back on it, he's always grumpy, wasn't he? Well, he is. He's know. just a petulant teenager in the grand scheme of uh, the Doctor's life. Yeah, pretty much, and he acts like it as well. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time. But yeah, he, I they always feel he gets unfairly, because if you watch later episodes, especially with Ben and Polly, mm-hmm. um, he's just a kindly old man by that point. Mm-hmm. I think because Hartnell had sort of grown into the role as well, and he, he loved being the Doctor. Oh yeah, he did. I remember reading something that he said, uh, something along the lines, that lovely lady, Miss Verity Lambert, gave me the script, and I fell in love with the character there and then. And because obviously, if um, anybody who knows anything about Hartnell is that he'd always played heavies and and um, sergeant major types. Yeah. Uh, things like Carry On Sergeant, which is an extension of the Army game. Yeah. Um, he played that, and he was in the Navy Lark as well, I think, mm-hmm. um, doing other things, similar characters to that, you know. Yeah. Um, he never played that kind of character before, and he mm-hmm. he was like Peter Cushing when he played Doctor Who. The reason he played Doctor Who was because he wanted his grandchildren to be able to see him in something. Yeah. And I think he was the case of that. He wanted his kids to be able to watch something he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, he's beloved by children the, the world over. Yeah. Was Hartnell. And uh, like I say, the, the, he did start off as a grumpy old fuck. <laughs> Frankly, he you did, but he softened. Words to you, Glenn. <laughs> hey? You got a lovely way with words to you. Oh, he was a grumpy old fuck. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, he was he was terrible, uh, even in things like the Daleks. But, I mean, in the, even in the Daleks, you can see him softening, especially towards Barbara. Mm-hmm. Um, and, obviously, towards Susan, because it's his granddaughter. He loves her. That's that's quite a good set, set up, yeah. relationship set up there. Well, he kind of realised he couldn't get away with anything for, with Barbara. She just completely no-nonsense. See, it's weird. Whenever I do watch old Doctor Who with with her in it, I always think Barbara's an old woman, and yet she was younger than we are. Yeah, we thirty, something really like young. that. Possibly, yeah. I was going to say possibly younger than that. Mm-hmm. Um, Chesterton was about thirty odd, wasn't he? I think uh, was he? In? But then you can't um, with, uh, men round about that time period anyway, because they're all dressed the same. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, that's very true. But uh, no, like I say, it's, it's, as time progressed, he, he softened and he, he had other companions uh, who they weren't scared of killing off. Oh, yeah. Katarina, like you said. Well, yeah, Katarina is a weird one because they, I'm guessing she seemed like a good idea at the time. And realised they couldn't, oh, dear, she's from ancient Greece. She's not going to know how to do a damn thing, what we're going to do, shit. <laughs> See, I think now they could do that character and do her justice. Yeah. Um, they could have this person from something like 500 BC, something like that. Possibly uh, older than that. Um, but, yeah, because they did Eremem. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's sort of 4000 BC. Yeah. Something like that. King to- just before King Tut and Camun, isn't she? Something like that. And, and they did that character in Big Finish really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I really do think if they'd done Katarina now, but back then they seemed like a good idea at the time. And then they, like you say, they sort of painted themselves in a corner and oh shit, what are we going to do with her? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's kill her off. Yeah, a bit of that was Victoria as well, but uh, for the next time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely talk about Victoria next time. But um, same with Dodo. I think it's because they made Dodo a bit stupid. Yeah, poor girl. Um, to the point where Jackie Lane wanted nothing to do with Doctor Who. Yeah, you could see what they were trying to go for, some uh, hip, trendy 60s uh, kid, but uh just didn't work. Rose Tyler, that's what they were going for, basically. Yeah. They were going for council estate, <laughs> ordinary girl next door kind of type of thing. Yeah, and they went too far with the working class thick hill thing. Yeah, mm. and I don't think people just didn't warm to her. Mm. Which is weird because they did the similar sort of thing with Ben. Because Ben's about as working class as they come. Yeah, but he was a sailor, so that uh, yeah. counts for something. Well, all the nice girls like a sailor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just speaking of Ben and Polly, they are going to be appearing in uh, the, the Christmas special. They've cast them. Um, I can't remember who the girl is, but there's a guy that was in Hollyoaks mm-hmm. who's playing Ben. Mm-hmm. So they're definitely getting 
sort of speaking, I don't think they're going to have a sizable amount in, in the thing. But it's nice to see that they've recast Ben and Polly. Yeah. I'd like uh, because I, I would have noticed them not being there. Because mm-hmm. um, I was wondering how the hell they're going to have worked this episode out. Oh, I don't know. When I crash landed in the Antarctic, obviously right at the time where the Cybermen are coming to fruition, the Mondasian ones. Yep. I wonder if we'll see them. They must do. They must, must be seeing them. Of course, they would make those costumes for no reason. And they'll have to do the proper voice as well. They won't be able to get away with doing the the voice that they did, which sounded a bit like Mondasian Cybermen, but not quite. They'll have to go full Roy Skelton on this yeah. one. Which is cool! Because <laughs> I think they're creepy as fuck. Oh, they are. Especially with the way the mouth opens and then the singy, the singy, sing, metallic singy song voice comes out and then the mouth Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> well, absolutely. I, I completely... Everybody knows how I feel about Mondasi and Simon and I think they're the best. Um, because they're the creepiest. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the closer, the further away you get from looking like actual men, mm-hmm. the, le- the less, yeah, yeah. It's like Davros is creepy. Mm-hmm. Dalek's not creepy. That what they represent is creepy. Yeah, uh, but Davros himself is a creepy bitch, <laughs> um, and I, I really love Davros. But um, obviously, in Hartnell's the first Doctor, he is the first one that meets the, the Daleks. Um, arguably, the first shots of the Time War are fired in his era. Mm-hmm. But I mean, what do you think of what do you think of the first Doctor? Is he one of your favourites? Is he ones that you sort of grew to love? Because I, I can tell you, from me, I didn't like him when I was a kid. I didn't like it. I grew to love him. Yeah, I didn't really like him, but I loved Troughton when I was the second Doctor as a kid. But I tell you, how I really hated as a Doctor as a kid, and everyone's probably going to turn. We're going to lose followers for this, aren't we? <gasps> hated him as a child. Because <gasps> he just seemed like that, you know, the rancid of headmaster you get at junior school. <gasps> yes, that's why I liked him. <laughs> he's so establishment. Yeah. He just thinks, if you can't beat him, join him. But I'll, I, I will use the fact that I'm a time lord to my advantage. Mm. I, if you're talking about petulant teenagers, we'll get to him. But yeah, he's a petulant teenager. Oh, yes. And then um, when I got my teens and started watching them again, because you know when they started repeating them in the early nineties, late mm. early nineties, it was uh, the Green Death that they showed, and I was like, he's quite good after all. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. But I, yeah, I mean, I, I felt the same way about Hartnell. I hated him when I was a kid because it's black and white and boring. And then you watch him when you're a bit more grown up, and sure, some of them are a bit dull, like the Chase. <sighs> that was. That's. I used to have it. Mm-hmm. They uh, brought out, I think it was the thirtieth anniversary. Yes, and it t- was. Yes, it t- they had the day remembrance of the, of the Daleks in the chase. Yes, and obviously remembrance. I actually wore out the tape. Mm-hmm. Uh, the chase, not so much, because <laughs> it's just so long. Was, yeah, I like the one about the haunted house though. <laughs> that was very clever. In the Mary's Quest, um, that was a brilliant episode as well. Where did everyone go? That was the Daleks. And the Empire State Building one with uh, Peter Purvis. Yeah, that was the second, third time, the second time we saw him up there, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. Because But they had little comedy bits mm. as well where the dialects were getting confused about stuff and having big, long conversations. The problem with that is that dialects should never have big, long conversations with each other. Mm-hmm. Doesn't work. No. Uh, and also, they filmed them from the top. <laughs> you should never do that. Um, I can't remember his name now, but one of the directors of the who did the um, master plan, and he did he was the guy who did um, Invasion of Earth mm-hmm. as well. Um, he said, "So we do Daleks from the creeper, from the keep, creeper camera, because they're imposing. If you look up at them, mm-hmm. if you look up top down, not so imposing. No, um, unless they're the go-go Power Rangers Daleks mm-hmm. when they were huge, but they're not huge anymore. They they stuck with the gold ones, but." Um, no, I, I like I say, I grew to love Hartnell um, and his style because he, he didn't. Nobody knew what to do with his character mm-hmm. to begin with. They didn't know where it was going. I mean, it's easy with hindsight, and in a, in a way, you know, Jodie Whittaker, although 
yes, she is groundbreaking. She kind of has it easier than any other Doctor because she's got 12 other people to look back on. Yeah. Whereas sort of Hartnell and Troughton, Mm -hmm. and to a certain extent Pertwee, they didn't have a playbook. No. They just looked at William Hartnell and thought, we'll try and be as complete opposite as him as possible. Well, I think Pertwee was the one who said, I don't know how to play it. And somebody said, play it as yourself. and said, I don't know who that is. (laughs) I don't know who John Pertwee is. I've never played John Pertwee or been John Pertwee. I'm always someone else. Um, Cary Grant used to say about himself. Even I. That's what Peter Sellers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Peter Sellers said it as well mm. on the Muppet Show. He said the hard, the hardest role Peter Sellers said he ever had to play was on the Muppet Show when he had to be himself because mm-hmm. he was never himself. Yeah. He was always playing someone else. Actors, and, um, well, look, actors always look odd when they're uh, on something and happen to be themselves. Apart from Tennant, who just did loving life, basically. <laughs> and Capaldi's the same. But Capaldi always looks uncomfortable when he isn't doing... When he's being himself, he always looks uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I know I ran uh, him in the middle of the night somewhere. It was in January. It was about uh, two in the morning. I'd just come out of the hospital because uh, Scott was ill. And there's Capaldi at St. Thomas's. Uh, and I thought, I'm looking at him. I thought, I know who you are. I'm sure I do. And the, he looked at and he backed off me. No. Uh, oh no! It's you. And then I just turned around and walked away as if I'd never seen them. <laughs> oh, you're lame. Yeah. I, I would have totally gone up. No, him. no. And he had, you know, he had his glasses on, and I still don't know to this day why he would be at St Thomas's Hospital at two in the morning. But uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe wasn't very well. Maybe visiting. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Nah, you never know. Um. But yeah, the Hartnell area um, signified with, with, like I say, a softening of the character. By the time that the 10th planet came around, he was a kindly old man, but he was very ill. I mean, you could sort of, you yeah. can tell by looking at those episodes, he's not a well man mm-hmm. by that point. He's only, what, 55? Yeah. Um, but it, back then, 55 was old. Yeah. He had cue cards and everything around him. Yeah, he but you needed them. Vascular dementia, I believe he had as well through smoking. Yeah, hardening of the arteries. It was arteriosclerosis. My granddad had that, um, and it is, it's true. It's uh, you know your mind goes because the blood supply to the brain isn't the best. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he, he just couldn't do it anymore. He was getting very very ill, and he didn't want to leave. Oh, I know that um, uh, adventure in time and space. Exactly. <laughs> oh God, I was crying. Oh, that was very really like that. You poor sod. I just want to hug you. <laughs> It's hugely clever how they keep bringing that line back. Yeah. Uh, because that's like three times they brought it back now. Yeah. Um, but that bit especially was kicked you right in the fields. Yeah. Um, because David Bradley's such a good actor as well. I mean, we should talk about an adventure in time and space because mm-hmm. obviously it's relevant to what's happening at Christmas because that's basically how David Bradley got the part. Yeah. Um, no one was expecting it at the time. It was just uh, it was going to be a docudrama, mm-hmm. very very loose docudrama, um, as part of the 50th anniversary special, which was like four years ago now. Yeah, we're getting old. Um, <laughs> but it's a, it's a great serial. Um, I say serial. It's a great one-off drama. Um, Gates really outdid himself, and it is yeah. really good how they got a lot of the old people in there. You know, so I think um, so. William Russell is. Um, He's the, what's the word, commissioner on the uh, on the front gate of the BBC. Yeah. Uh, and they got people like, uh, I think, oh, crap, um, there's people in there playing Deedley Derbyshire and Verity Lambert and, and all those sort of pe- pe- people as well. And they did, um, they didn't get Dodo, they did get Anka Wills was in there. Yeah. I think Deborah Watling's in there as well. Fraser Hines is in there? Somewhere, yes. He's in there somewhere. Um, of course, he plays the second Doctor, isn't he? Uh, there's Fraser Hines on the Big Finish shop. Um, uh, so there are a lot of... Rishi oh, sorry? Smith is Rishi Smith is the second. <laughs> yeah, let's let's not do that again, shall we? No. Um, he wasn't good. No, it just reminded us of uh, League of Gentlemen. Yeah, he looked like Pam Doof. Yeah. I mean, how can you look like Pam? Like Pam Doof. I was half expecting to explode like Ollie Plimsolls, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have loved I'd rather see Pam Doof. Mm. Hello! Anybody got a recorder? 
Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, that's not. I mean, I, I did like the picture they took with um, Gators as Pertwee. <laughs> Although if they are going to get someone back as Perth, well, the guy who does it on Big Finish is pretty good. But oddly enough, Culshaw mm-hmm. is better at Perth than he is at Tom Baker. I know he loves doing Tom Baker because yeah. he loves Tom Baker. Um, but his Perth is arguably better. Didn't he phone Tom Baker up once? He did. Uh, he used to do it on Dead Ringers. Yeah. And he used to do a prank bit. And he did uh, the best one with Sylvester McCoy. Because mm-hmm. he was completely taken. He says, are you drunk, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling with a crossword puzzle. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but he rang Tom Baker up. And Tom Baker immediately got it. That's <laughs> the best thing about that. Is that he gets it. He yeah. knows. Number one, he knows who it is. Mm-hmm. Number two, he just plays along straight away. <laughs> Oh, yes, I, I liked a lot of my assistant, Sarah Jane. She was a cracking bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those two totally were. <laughs> the oh, them two? Absolutely. Yeah. They were. Ah, oh, the Doctor and Sarah Jane. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, they always say it was Joe and the Doctor. And I always say, mm. not on the show. No, <laughs> not those two. In real life. In real life. Oh, mm, really? Yes. Mm. I think they were. But the Doctor and the fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane, absolutely they were at it. Yeah. Completely, totally, every day, all the time. <laughs> um, I ship it. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, adventuring in space and time. I always say time and space, but space and time, isn't it? Mm. Um, just really well done. Just pick the right people for it because Brian Cox was great in it as Cindy Newman as well. Yeah. Um, but just picking David Bradley as as Hartnell just worked mm-hmm. um, and it was I, I remember thinking then if they ever do a multi-doctor story they should do a first doctor mm-hmm. and he can do it he can do it and then you've got your wish <laughs> well <laughs> yeah I mean I, I I was shook shit as the kids say yeah. um, when because I, I first saw it on the internet I thought oh I, I hope that's true. I hope it is. And then you got that last bit of the, the last series yeah. where he just appears and it's like, oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> and the best thing about that is watching the reaction videos of people around the world who necessarily don't have any connection to the first Doctor. But because of an adventure in time and space, they have actually gone back and watched the first Doctor era stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of kids around these days, uh, or, you know, teenagers um, who have quite a big connection with that character were really crying buckets when they saw the first Doctor yeah. come out. And, a lot of, and were really excited. And a lot of them have a soft spot for Bradley anyway because of them being Arbus Filch. Yeah. I know Lucy, my, uh, my daughter Lucy, she absolutely adores David Bradley just because of him being Filch. He's from my you hometown my as well. Cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's from my hometown as well. Yeah. Uh, he's from York, is uh, David Bradley, so uh, a big connection to him. He's quite a cool guy. Mm. Um, but yeah, he's been, I mean, obviously, he's been around for years as a character actor, but this, this is arguably the biggest thing I would say he's done. Yeah. He's been the Doctor. He's been the Doctor um, Who as well. He was in uh, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, wasn't he? He was. He was a right bastard as well, isn't that? He also uh, he's, bastards. <laughs> he's one of the few big people the Doctor's actually properly killed. Because mm-hmm. yeah. there's, there's no fucking about. He kills him. Mm-hmm. He he makes it so that he can't leave his ship, so his ship gets destroyed. There's no indirect. Oh, sorry, they killed themselves. Yeah. Like he usually sort of tries to get it. No, no. But then again, he had killed that Triceratops. Yes. So he kind of deserved it. Mm-hmm. Um, he nearly killed uh, Rory's dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, just just in another Harry Potter connection as well, Mac Williams. Um, but yeah, because of adventure in space and time, that's what got him the gig. Uh, there were first doctors before. Um, we, we should mention Herndl. Yeah. Bless him. Um, was, that really, really, was, that a, was that his real hair or a really crap wig? It was a really crap wig. Um, I'm going to be honest, that's the first time I saw a proper First Doctor performance. Mm-hmm. It was the Five Doctors. Because um, they, they just didn't show them when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. When we were little, when it was actually shown. No. No. I wouldn't have known about the First Doctor. They just didn't repeat them. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly because they didn't have them. They got rid of a lot by that point, but um, so yeah, the first first doctor I saw was Richard Herndl, and you know, to be fair to him, they are using his line. Mm-hmm. 
when he says, I am the first Doctor. The original, you might say. Yes. <laughs> That's a Herndl line. That isn't William Hartnell. He never said that. Mm-hmm. Um, I do kind of want to see him say, one day I shall come back. <laughs> yes, I shall come back. Uh, because I can't see that without crying, that bit. Oh. That makes me cry. Uh, not as much as it made... <laughs> yeah. Not as much as... Oh, sorry. I was going to just say that was my favourite uh, ever first Doctor story, that. So... Dalek Invasion? Yes. Yeah, when he let Susan go because he didn't want her to be travelling in the TARDIS with him and exposed to danger all the time. I want you to have a life. And it's like... And they never really picked up on it until Big Finish. Mm-hmm. Uh, because obviously he, he had a couple of adventures with Susan, I think. Mm-hmm. Did the Eighth Doctor, um, who is probably the Doctor that is closest to the First Doctor, because mm-hmm. obviously a lot of people only really know Eight from the the movie where yeah he was nice enough. Yeah. He's a very he's very pertwee in that film. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, the Action Man, and all that kind of stuff. There's a little bit of Tom Baker thrown in there as well. But in the audios, he's very much the First Doctor, I think, mm-hmm. or what the First Doctor would have been as a young man. Mm-hmm. Um, very irascible, very quick-tempered. Mm-hmm. And very Edward um, and dandy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, he had a couple of edges with Susan. I was just going to say, I do like Dalek Invasion of Earth. Um, and, and although that bit makes me cry, it doesn't make me cry as much as the end of Adventure of Space in Time, mate. No. makes me cry. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw Matt Smith <laughs> watching over him on that artist. Oh dear, <laughs> I embarrassed myself. I'm glad there was nobody else in the room with me at that point. <laughs> Oh, it's so nice! Oh no! <laughs> oh, he saw him! Oh. And then people ruined it by saying, How would he have known? How would he have known? Is that my. Fucking shut up! <laughs> you know, no romance in your soul. Oh, uh, but. Uh, the, other, the other thing that makes me cry is Matt's, is uh, the second doctor, the 11th doctor and the curator. Yeah, that makes a lot of people cry. It's what he says. I really think you might. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone was like, huh? Well, it's because it wasn't expected. Yeah. He, he didn't obviously do the five doctors because he fell out with um, JNT. Yeah. And he was an, he is, he is an, a very old man. Mm-hmm. Um, and people just didn't expect him to show up. Yeah. And he did. And it's like, Jesus, that's like royalty showing up, that yes. is. Um, which is why it wasn't in the Five Doctors uh, reboot-ish, or Five Doctors-ish reboot. Uh, because uh, it was Cultural Voice, I think, on that one. Mm-hmm. When he did appear. But uh, yeah, that got a lot, it made me fucking jump up and go, yes! <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. The only bit that made me cry in um, Day of the Doctor was uh, Trenzalore. Oh, we need to find another destination because I don't want to go. <laughs> and it's like, it, it didn't make me cry the first time he said that. That made me cry. Yeah. Because, ah, oh. Pissed myself laughing. Just thank God. <laughs> I think it's, with me, it was because I'd had enough time to miss him. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I really miss Ten. Mm-hmm. I do. I didn't at the time. I, I'd had enough of him because I think I'd had enough of what Russell T. Davis did to him. Yes. Made him far too emo. Yeah, he emasculated him quite a bit. And he just he was too hung up on his issues. Mm-hmm. And and in the uh, Day of the Doctor, he wasn't hung up at all. Right, he was a little bit, but you know what I mean. Um, I have since watched it again, and I do cry at all the John Hurt bits now, because, oh. I know. And it was really blessed. And uh, I'm very, very happy to have my Funko Pop War Doctor. Mm. Um, because he was so good in that as well. Yeah. Um, and I'm really, this is what I'm hoping, because it's Moffat's last push. Mm-hmm. I'm really hoping that... Um, it's going to be as this... fantastic and whimsical and yet to see. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, we, it, you're not going to have <clears throat> uh, the big, he gets injured, and you're not going to have that sort of dread of when's it going to happen. Mm-hmm. Because usually with a regeneration, he usually gets hurt, destroyed, killed, you know, whatever, and then it happened. We know it's already happening. Mm-hmm. He's already regenerating and he's he's trying to stave it off. Mm-hmm. So we know it's coming. Mm-hmm. 
it, it, there's, there's not going to be one thing that sets it off. So that's sort of taken out of the equation. So it's just a last hurrah. Yeah. And um, it's, it's going to be really, really cool to see how the first Doctor convince, or they, how they convince each other that they have to regenerate. Yeah. And that it's okay to regenerate. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then we get uh, Jodie Whittaker coming in. Mm-hmm. And I kind of hope by August 2018 or September 2018 that people have just got their heads around the fact that it's going to be a woman. Because it's like, even now to me, it's not a big thing. Yeah, it's not. Just Doesn't matter. Just another actor. Yeah. And it's going to be another actor after that. Mm. You know, however long she stays, because she could stay for a long time. Any old git from the uh, equity books. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Barusa. <laughs> That was such a horrible line, that. Well, he didn't. He got it cut out, didn't he? Of all future yeah. things, <laughs> and it was any old cunt from the yeah. equity book. I think it was originally. Um, an equity card, yeah, that was it. So we go, oh god, that was. I think that's because he started working with people like Sylvester McCoy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh dear, um, but yeah, I, I have a feeling that's not his line. I have a feeling that's William's line. Yeah, <laughs> um, but even he kind of regrets it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> was kind of true at the time though, wasn't it? Yeah, well. Um, but there you go. Um, but yeah, I really hope it's sort of a really last, good last hurrah for for twelve, and really throw some good light on some on 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 um, on, on Wanty, yeah. because I think David Bradley deserves it. Yeah. Um, it's just nice to see him. He's really happy about doing it as well. How, um, like you said, how the, how he manages to persuade twelve to turn into a woman. <laughs> yeah. Well, the master liked it. So what you say? <laughs> <laughs> Missy liked it. I I love the fact. I keep seeing on Twitter that people are saying, "Oh, she's definitely dead." Like, mm-hmm. Do you not know anything about the master? No. Like nothing at all. He died. It's gonna be a bloke. Fire, and yet he still came back. <laughs> yeah. He got trapped in Castrovalva, and he still came back. He got eaten by the Eye of Harmony. He got left on a dying planet. Yeah, he'll be fine. She'll be fine. They'll be fine. Although I do think it... Exactly. I do think it'd probably be a bloke next time. Mm. Um, But we we will see on that one. Uh, Maybe maybe Jodie Whittaker won't meet the Master at all. Mm -hmm. Or the Dark... Well, she has to meet them at least once a series, I think, isn't it? That's the deal. Uh, but uh, we shall see. But um, yeah, like I say, there, there's not an awful lot to talk about with the first Doctor because number one, we haven't seen that many episodes. We haven't seen all the episodes that the first Doctor because a lot of them don't exist anymore. Um, that and the fact that there's not an awful lot to talk about because he was kind of one dimensional, um, but did soften over time. So by the time we get to the tenth planet, he is a, a, a more full character. <laughs> But because of his health issues, there were limitations on how far they could push that character. Yeah. Next episode, we'll be talking about the second Doctor. And there's uh, quite a lot more to talk about with that because we're, we're dealing with not just an actor, but an actor. Yes. Um, so we will talk about that next time. Um, and both Lee. of turned up in uh, Doctor Who, didn't they, both of them? Yeah, they have. What's that? What's that, sorry? Trout and Sons, both of them have turned up in Doctor Who as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely they have. Uh, because you had one that was in Midnight and then one was in Last Christmas. Yeah. And one because he was racist towards aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them was in uh, the Peladone story. Oh, yeah, that was David. Uh, it was in Midnight, so that was David Troughton, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need Pertwee, Sonny. We need Pertwee to do Pertwee, do basically. <laughs> he, he, do you know what? He might... He might, he might get convinced to do it because he, he always said he would never have anything to do with Doctor Who and then he dressed up as his dad. Yeah, for Halloween. For Halloween. <laughs> and everybody said, jeez! Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, you need to do it. You need to do it. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. it. Totally one day he will do it, I think. Yeah, he will. When he's ready. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When Gotham finishes. Yes. Um, I, I think Chimnall might convince him to do it. Oh, I really hope he does because it'd be yes. so good to see the third Doctor again in something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, irascible old twat. 
What we need, though, we need to... I mean, it's kind of disrespectful while they're still alive, but we need someone to sort of... Who could jump into Colin Baker's shoes? Because Colin's always said he would never come back on the main show. Because mm-hmm. he said, I'm just too old. Mm-hmm. I, I, lo- I look too old. Yeah. But I, I have a feeling if somebody did a really good impression of him, so I don't know, Rory Bremner or someone like that, um, <clears throat> he would be totally down with somebody doing it. Mm-hmm. I don't think but, you could get anybody like him. He's just a complete one-off, that man. Yeah. Same, well, same as Davison and McCoy. Mm. Um, especially Davison. It's very difficult to get people. He's kind of unimpersonatable. Because mm. he's... I don't know. He's just too... The beige one. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say... I don't want to say bland. He's just too nice. There's not yeah. a lot of personality there. Unless he maybe does Tristan, you know? Yeah. Um, the nicest out of all of them, really. That's... <clears throat> Most affable. Oh, he's a feat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was really nice, but at what cost? <laughs> I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown, Perry. <laughs> oh, I love six. Anyway, we'll get on to six, another, another one. Lee, uh, if somebody was wanting to find you on the old wide world of the interwebs, where's the best place to do it? Uh, come, across, come over to Instagram, uh, Lee Wildtime. Come over to the dark side of Instagram. I'm still not on that. I love Instagram. I don't get it. You have to take loads of photos, right? Yes. Oh, no. Fuck that shit. Can't be doing that. <laughs> <clears throat> I, think I can't run. I don't have any old shit flying around the house or outside. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh, yes. no. I probably only follow you and that'll be it. I don't, I don't know anybody on it. There's certainly no celebrities on Instagram. See, I I've, follow uh, I've got a, a press release from Tom Ford for his for their new perfume. It's called Fucking Fabulous. And I thought, yeah, I've got to post that. <laughs> Brilliant. I bet it sells loads. Anyway. Um, Even a 400 quid a bottle. <laughs> <clears throat> what? Yeah, oh, I know. Bloody hell. Um, if you want to find us on Twitter, it's at NeverBeaconPod. Uh, if you want to follow, <laughs> I, I will start using it. I, I was using it and then I got out of the habit after I came off holiday and yeah. then I need to get into the habit of using it again and I will. Um, if you want to find us on Facebook, it's uh, look for the Nerva Beacon podcast on Facebook. If you want to find me, it's at Cumry Nerd Cave on Twitter and at Glenn Jakeman on Facebook. Again, with Facebook, please do send me a message. Otherwise, I won't be adding you on there. Uh, and of course, listen to us uh, every week on Back to the 80s as well. Um, I've done one recently with friends of the podcast, Duncan. He has come back on the podcast and we did a, a whole good thing about Robocop, mm-hmm. which is uh, will be up this uh, week as well. Uh, and this will be up midweek but you'll know that when you listen to it yeah. <laughs> i'm saying it after the fact because hey look wibbly wobbly timey wimey <laughs> excellent stuff uh, that's it for this week we should be back very very soon with like i say some second doctor stuff but for now say bye bye lee bye bye everybody see you next time <laughs>